Welcome to the show, everybody. Joseph Robert, the Fantasy Football Counselor, back to the Fire and Ice episode with Tom Santanella. What's going on, Tommy Guns? Going on, Joey Guns. A lot of energy today. It's a Friday. Typically, we do this show Wednesday. I had some things to do on Wednesday. We got busy, but you know we're here now, and that's all that matters. We got a huge episode here because I just did a running back episode to avoid. If you haven't watched that, go back and check it out. Today, we're talking about wide receivers to avoid, and I want to get Tom's input because I'm going to say straight up, I don't like this guy this year for fantasy, but Again, that repl- you know that also speaks in reality as well, because if they're not performing in reality, it's not going to convert to fantasy numbers. And we're going to get Tom's input on what we think on that. Are you, are you ready to go, Tom? I'm ready to roll. Yeah. So wide receivers to avoid. Before we get into that, guys, this is huge. Aside from 16 rounds, you guys know 16 rounds. Get it below the ultimate game changer for fantasy analysis. Get rid of the draft kits. Draft kits are dead. Get the 60 round draft solution. Also, something else new: fantasy direct i'm going to text you guys optimal dfs players optimal players to start and sit every single week i'm also going to be texting you guys the waiver wires every week and so much more guys there's a link below fantasy direct or head on over to the fantasy football counselor.com go under programs and get direct access so tom this is crazy i'm gonna be texting people now i mean (laughs) sign me up Sign me up. You already signed up, did you not? <laughs> I'm a last minute guy. I told you. Last minute shopper here. All right. All right. So, guys, get it at the fantasyfootballcounts.com. Also, link it below in the pinned comments for fantasy direct. First ever trailblazing again. All right, Tom. So, let's roll into this. The first wide receiver I'm going to avoid. And we're going to try to focus on top tier guys, guys that are being drafted in rounds like one to five. Those are the types of guys we want to talk about. Guys that are like, you know, a shoe in for a big season. Like these are guys who are going to perform. Everyone's drafting them first, second, third round. They love these guys. So the first guy I want to avoid here. And again, I shock the world every time, but it's DeAndre Hopkins. And I don't know if that's a shock to a lot of people, but the thing about him, he finished fifth last year in PPR. So he's not really a top three guy. The year before had a great season, finished number one with 333 fantasy points. Back in 2017, always finishing uh, near the top, but back in 2017, did not actually finish first, finished second in PPR amongst wide receivers. Antonio Brown beat him back in 2017. But, I mean, this guy's always a top finisher, and he's always played with mediocre quarterbacks. But this year, he's going to be going with Kyler Murray, and I understand the ceiling, but Fitzgerald is still there. They've got Kirk there, and Fitzgerald maxed out at 109 targets okay now if hopkins wants to produce on a top five level which is where he's being drafted looking at last year's number tom tom that's 150 targets 104 receptions looking at 2018 numbers that's 163 targets 115 receptions so my question to you tom and i i kind of know my answer i don't think the volume's there do you think the volume's going to be there for hopkins what's happening with this offense i want to get your thoughts um, I think Fitzgerald takes a step back. I think his role is going to um, be less than it was last year. I think Hopkins will perform there. One thing you have to look at is uh, Kyler Murray. I don't think he's a great quarterback. I, I don't know if he can be. This is going to be you know years two and three for quarterbacks or where they really start to blossom. Right. Or not blossom, as in your friend Mitchell Trubisky. And <laughs> I don't know what we have in Kyler Murray, but one thing I can guarantee you is they're going to throw the ball. So uh, there's minimum 100, 125 targets in my mind for DeAndre Hopkins. I also see him being the go-to guy there. I see them throwing the ball a lot. I just don't, I see Fitzgerald taking a step back. Fitzgerald, you know, it's funny because Fitzgerald isn't a guy to spread the field. They don't, you know, they have that in that rookie Isabella from all from last year, but he never really played much. They, right. they, they are a okay offense. I just think. I, I don't know. I'm not sold on the coach yet, but I really, truly think DeAndre is going to get the bulk of the the targets. Right. I, I I think he. But the problem that you may have is if he's too good and gets too much of the bulk of the targets or attempted targets, I should say. Before he may get double coverage in it, and in, in, in to back up what you say, that may leave the middle of the field open with a guy like Isabella stepping up, any anybody stepping up. It could be um, Larry Fitzgerald sticking to his 100 targets or something like that because they finally have a guy who can command double coverage. I think that's the only thing you have to be concerned about over there. If they glue into him too much, he's going to be facing a lot of double coverage. But with that said, I still think um, he's going to get 
the targets. Uh, Murray is still growing as a quarterback. He led the lead. He made a lot. He holds on to the ball a lot, you know, so right. I, I think he's really going to develop as a quarterback. Um, but I still think he gets 120 targets, 125. That That's that's my my guess. I think he gets, you know, Fitzgerald goes down to about 80. That That's where I I'm think, at. I think that's the ceiling, 125. Again, that doesn't justify a first round and a first round fantasy pick. Going back to the double coverage, I have a question for you. I know that Hopkins can bring the ball down, yeah. but you got to understand there's a rapport thing. My first question, is there going to be rapport? I don't know. My second question is he's already got the rapport with Fitzgerald and, and Kirk. Why wouldn't you just go to them? And my third question is, and you don't, you can kind of answer in one kind of question. You know, and these are things I'm going through in my head. And you, you should be too if you're thinking of drafting Hopkins in the first round. Is okay, yeah, he can bring the ball down, but with double coverage, can Kyler consistently thread the needle and get him the ball through double coverage like that? Is the rapport and the skill set there for Kyler yet, right? Yeah. And you know, DeAndre. He's more of a possession guy. He averaged what uh I don't I don't know if he's like uh yards per per catch last year. What were they? 11.2. He's not a big play guy. He's a possession guy and that's what Fitzgerald was and that's what he is. But when you're looking at Fitzgerald, I think you see a guy who's a shell of his form his form, former self. He's got he's a 7 800 yard a year receiver. Right. Uh, I think he'll come up get some big third down catches. I think he'll get a couple touchdowns. But I think it's set up for Hopkins to be the one on the outside. I think he can come down with the balls and double coverage, but he's going to get a lot of separation off the line just because he's a lot better better than the other corners. He's not going to get that. He's not going to go deep a lot and be that kind of deep threat guy. He didn't do that in Houston a lot. Right. Um, so I, I, I mean, listen, he's dealt with double coverage in Houston to some extent because who's who did they have last? You know, Fuller and a couple other guys. Right. Uh, and Fuller, but Fuller was helped. See, that's the key. Fuller was there to stretch the field. I think a lot of it sees if they can stretch the field and and, and bring one of those safeties deep. Um, and, and that's what you're going to have to see. You're going to have to see a guy like DeAndre Hopkins just getting more one on one opportunities uh, at that first level, uh, and not not in that mid level and in that mid level as well, where the safety can draw somewhere deep or he can use the middle of the field because that that's where his strengths are going to lie. They're, they're, in yeah. my opinion, uh, from what I've seen from him. Yeah, so basically kind of reinforced what I what I was thinking and what I was saying. I just don't think the volume is going to be there. 125 targets just doesn't do it for me for a first round pick. And again, I'm not going to I'm not going to stay away from him. And, and I see the ceiling, but you guys as you know, my fantasy football draft strategy is going robust RB and I talk about it in the 16 round draft so you should make sure you get it below. Um but I'm telling you, I go robust RB because I, I know the volume is going to be there for guys that I'm getting like a Josh Jacobs or a Todd Gurley in the second first second round. I'm not I'm not going for this guy. I still think he's going to be their number one in reality. Fantasy wise, it's not. It's it's going to be riskier to take him in the first. I agree with you, but he's going to be a one that they sorely need and that Kyla Murray really, really needs. But you look, he came from that same offense in Oklahoma as Baker yeah. Mayfield came from as well, and they seem to grab. Don't I mean Baker gravitated a little more towards Landry last year, right? Than Odell. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't trust quarterbacks. Those are system quarterbacks. So that's the other thing that scares me. Like right. if you. You got to understand he holds on to the ball so long. Uh, Murray, it, it, this is really an important year for him. I mean, it's obvious to say, but I have to say it. Just like Baker, like bombed in his second year, right? Right. His third year. This is Donald's third year. This is Allen's third year. But Baker comes from the same system, and that system in that spread offense made them successful. And when you're in a spread offense, you have a lot of options. So that you know, I can see what you're saying. When you have the more options, you have the uh, exactly. more targets to go around not towards one person. And I don't know what kind of quarterback Kyler Murray is going to end up becoming. I do think he wants a go-to guy. I think this will be his go-to guy, but yeah. he's going to get number one wide receiver targets. I just don't think it's going to be, you know, 150, 160 targets. Okay. And one more thing to wrap this up here, because we can go on about this forever, but Kenny and Drake caught 68, uh, sorry, 50 receptions for 68 targets. David Johnson who literally didn't play much, had 47 targets. Uh, Chase Edmonds, 21. So there's 100, 120 targets going to running backs as well. So I just don't see, there's just way too much. You're just thinking wide receivers, the running backs catch the ball there too. Just stay away. That's my verdict. Don't invest a second round, early second round, late first round pick on Hopkins. Get a running back at that point. That's the verdict on that. The ball, you, what's I'm that? sorry. One more point. I also think you have to take into account there. I don't think they're going to be a great football team. They're, they're either, th you know, they're probably the last team in that division. I don't think right. some people think they're going to break out, but I think they'll be behind a lot and they will be throwing the ball. So that may get him some more opportunities.
All right, so stay away. That's the verdict. The volume won't be there. That's that's my prediction. Again, Warren, I'm first yeah. What's that? Warren, a first rounder. You're saying? Yeah, yeah. Not a late first rounder for sure. But that's where he's going. So if you don't get him, you're not going to get him, right? If you don't pick him up there. <laughs> All right, next guy, let's talk. Actually, let's do a, a one-two punch here. Two guys that I'll be avoiding, and the guys that I'm going to talk about are Godwin and Evans with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, right now, the average draft position for Godwin is like mid to late second round on a 12-person league typically, mm -hmm. and then you see Evans come right off the board in the third round. Now, Tom, with these two guys, the consensus, the consheepses are confused the way they have them ranked. They both have them ranked. Uh, both of these receivers ranked in the top 10. Now, it fluctuates typically around, you know, Godwin is sixth amongst wide receivers. Evans is around seven or eight. It goes up and down, but they're both, bottom line is they're both in the top 10. Fact of the matter is they both both won't finish in the top 10. But Tom, here's why the mainstream is confused. It's because Godwin finished second in PPR last year, and they're putting Evans in there by default because he's technically the wide receiver one. So they're very confused as to who's going to get the bulk of the volume. And now you've got a new quarterback thrown on the ball. It's just a matter. This comes down to it's a coin flip. So you're investing a second round or third round pick on a coin flip flip because one of these guys going to emerge and I'm staying away from both of them because of that fact. Now, Godwin could have an amazing year, but with Brady throwing the ball, we know he gravitates to a specific wide receiver. Last year, it was Edelman who had 153 targets and 100 receptions, and then he kind of spreads the ball around. Now, I think there was like, what, 95 targets for James White last year. So, the you know, the running backs are going to get their share. Um, you know, the tight ends are going to get their share. Godwin Evans, not enough to make both of them viable uh, top 10 picks. I'm staying away. What are your thoughts? Is what I said might make sense? And what do you think of the Brady and who he's going to gravitate to? Uh, some of it makes sense. Yes. He's definitely going to go with who's open. Listen, Brady's a veteran quarterback. He's not a guy that needs to lock in on somebody, but he like any quarterback, he's going to want a comfort zone. Right. Um, here's where I think it differs a little bit. And I, I think where targets can be misleading in this situation. I think Brady loves the big play guy. And he doesn't have he's not he hasn't had a lot of those in his career. The big tall receivers that can run a fast route and and get deep down the field. And that's Mike Evans, assuming he comes back healthy from his injuries and all that stuff. I think Mike Evans may will end up with less receptions, but will end up with more yards. His yards, yards per reception are higher. He'll end up with more touchdowns. Bruce Arians is going to ear it out. We all know that. Um you know, in the fourth quarter, when they're up seven to 10 points, they're going to throw the ball to go up 14. They're not going to run the ball to protect the lead. That's just what Tom Brady does. They put right. teams away. They put teams to sleep. You know, they're, they're, <laughs> that's what they do. So I'm looking at Mike Evans making, I take Mike Evans over Godwin just because of the big play ability and, and the more yardage uh, ability. And I think Mike Evans is, is elite. He's a stud. Um, I, I, I think Mike Evans is Mike Evans is better than Godwin. You got to look at one thing. When I look at receivers and I've looked at them and I've worked with them for years, you need to put together good year after good year after good year, at least three years in a row in order for me to consider you good. And now Godwin, how many good years has he had? Right. One. So let's back up a second. Right. Right. I, I, Godwin still needs to prove himself. And now he could be the real deal. I'm not saying he's not, but I'm going with the sure thing. I'm going with the big play capability. Tom Brady is a firework 4th of July kind of guy. He wants the home run. He wants the touchdown. I'm going with that. They're throwing They're throwing to put points on the board. So I'm going with Evans over Godwin. That's a good point. And like I said, Godwin's coming off earlier in the drafts because yeah. the mainstream is copying and pasting. So by default, Everyone thinks, oh, because he finished second. But that was a different quarterback, different situation. One good year out of the three that he's played. Evans, more consistent. And I, I can see this happening, exactly what you said. I definitely see that happening. But again, just to avoid, it's like, um, you know, you just avoid avoid it. If there's that many question marks and red flags, just avoid it. And then you got to look at the tight ends. How much is break going to be a factor? Or Howard and Gronkowski. Gronkowski hasn't finished a season since God knows when. 2000, what, 12? Like, he doesn't finish seasons. And I, I can't trust the guy coming back. Rusty, I don't even know if he's in, in, well, in shape or form. He's right? in shape. I think you're going to see a better Gronkowski. Maybe not in the box score, but you're going to see a Gronkowski. Listen, when Gronkowski was on the Patriots, he was their number one receiver. He right. was getting double and triple coverage. I've seen it play. I've seen it live. I've seen it all the time. Gronkowski was so good, they were putting him on the outside in some games and throwing him the lob ball, and teams couldn't stop him. Gronkowski was getting beat up. He was getting hit at the line of scrimmage, hit in the middle of the field, hit in the secondary. Gronkowski was the number one receiver there. Here, he can be 
a guy kind of like I spoke about with Fitzgerald that's going to know his role as he gets older. He's going to catch the big third down, the big touchdown. You got Evans, you got Godwin, you got Gronkowski. Gronkowski isn't going to get all this double and triple coverage anymore. Gronkowski used to get triple covered. So right. you're going to see a Gronkowski that won't put up the numbers that he did because he's not the number one, not just tight end. On the Patriots, he was the number one receiver. He was he, over Edelman for sure. It was a go-to thing. They were going to Gronkowski. You know that. Third yeah. and long, uh, uh, third and goal, whatever it was. So Gronkowski will produce, but not at the level of, of a one anything. But he will make the big plays, and that doesn't matter for you, but that matters for Tampa Bay. Right. He had a big year, what, in 20, I think 2016, or uh, what was it, 2017, I think, was his big year. He had a huge year in 2017, and uh, 2018, he had a pretty decent year as well. But again, this guy, it's a, it's a different team, different offense, right? Different situation. And yeah. he doesn't finish seasons. But by the fact of the matter is the ball is going to be spread around. Yeah. Everyone's drafting these guys like they're going to be top 10 finishers, both of them collectively. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm just going to avoid them. It's that simple, guys. And everyone's saying, well, Joe, I'm avoiding all these top receivers. Who do I get? You know, if you really want a receiver in round two, I like Galladay. Don't you think? Don't you like Galladay? Do you think he's going to get the volume yourself? Yeah, yeah, I mean, he has to get the volume. Who else are you giving it to? <laughs> Jones, Jones. Yeah, uh, Jones. Like you know, he's he's yeah, he's. I don't, I don't, I never liked Marvin. I mean, he's okay, yeah. but he's not. He Marvin Jones isn't good. Just no. Way. <laughs> Marvin Jones is okay. He's an average guy, you know. Um, but. But Galladay's a lot better of a player, and he's he was gelling really well with Stafford, and I think Stafford, I like that offense this year. So I do I. I'm excited. I'm really excited to see what they do there. All right, next guy here that I'm avoiding, and another late first round pick that I'm not touching at all. The guy I'm talking about here again, watching his training videos, the guy's a monster. But Tyree Kill, but he's only what he's finished two out of the four seasons he's played. Last year, twelve games, got a little banged up. And the thing about him, uh, Tom, is that he is extremely volatile. What I mean by that, obviously, on a game-by-game -game basis, he'll have a game where he has 40 points. The next game, he'll put up a donut or he'll put up four points. Yeah. The inconsistency is not good for a guy that I want to get in the first round. So for that reason alone, never mind the off-field issues if they reoccur again or if he gets injured or they have a lot of targets and all the other reasons why I'm going to avoid him. The talent is there, but I don't see the consistent volume going to be there for him. I just don't see it, Tom. I don't, I mean, one more thing before we get into your uh, thoughts on this, this guy maxed out at 137 targets in his career. That's the most targets he's seen in a year maxing out at that. That was back in 2018 last year, only 89 targets. Again, that's because of 12 games. I don't, the ceiling isn't high in regards to attempts and volume. You're going to get some huge games, a great DFS player. If I play him week to week in daily fantasy, but for a year long guy, forget it. What are, what are your thoughts? Would you invest in this guy? Well, yeah, it just matters where, obviously. Now, let me tell you something. I don't think he's ever going to be in this offense, a hundred reception a year guy. He's more of a big play guy. Like we just talked about um, with Evans, even though Evans is a volume guy as well, he used to be a volume guy as well. Um, you know, two years ago, he averaged 17 yards the year before that 15.8 last year, 14.8 went down a little bit last year. He only played 12 games. He's a thousand yard receiver if he plays 16 games, but that doesn't warrant you, you know, a, a first round pick. Correct. Right. So I, I think the pro that you're, you listen, if you have him on your team, you're right. He's going to drop some goose eggs on you, but then <laughs> you're going to have some 180 yard games and he's definitely, definitely going to have some big games. Um, I don't think this offense is designed for him to have big games or even like really good games, 16 games, you know, uh, because he's just, it's the offense. They're going to spread it around. It's the West coast offense. He's the type of guy also to catch a five yard pass and bring it to the house, 70 yards. And you're not going to do that every week. And he gets a lot of big plays. You don't have big plays every week. So he's a guy that, you, you know, you're going to pull your hair out. You're not going to. You're going to be unhappy with on a week and way out because you, you could end up with what five points one week with him. Yeah, I and don't. I don't trust that. I don't like that. I told you before. I like sure things. To me, he's not a sure thing week in week out. He, listen, he might win you a couple weeks if he goes for ten catches and two hundred yards and four touchdowns, right? Yeah. But is that worth sacrificing a couple goose eggs? I'm not touching them. And, and the thing is, if you really want to get a volatile player from the Chiefs and you want some Chief stock, get McCole Hardman after the 10th round for free. Nobody's drafting that guy. And he's just going to have those volatile games as well, if that's what you want. What's the that? Chief, the Chiefs, Andy Reid's playing to win the game. You know, he's a smart coach. He's he's coaching to – everyone's coming after them this year. They're the 
division favorite, the AFC favorite. They're the Super Bowl favorites again. I mean, you have to in the AFC, they are the favorites. I mean, people can argue the Ravens, but in the NFC, maybe the Niners, you can say can, can uh, they can definitely can beat them. They almost did in the Super Bowl. So I think Andy Reid's going to that's that's the way he game plans to spread the ball around and to trick the, you know, to trick the defense. And that, right. that's always been doing that. So I think you're going to see more of that. Yeah, I, 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 I'm just avoiding it. He's a, that's no, the, he's a freak. He's a freak. He's a really good, but yeah. it's just not a good fit for that area. Yeah, and guys, you're seeing it. Like this is not a biased opinion by any means. And it's like if it's it's good to like for me to do the research and I know my stuff for fantasy. But to get that reassurance for Tom, it, it's really good to get that because he lives and breathes football, like pro football. So it's interesting to get that reinforcement for me. It just gives me my own pat on my back. It gives me a pat on the back, Tom. Thank you. And he doesn't agree with me usually. You should see us off the air. He wants to punch me, and I want to punch him in the, in, in the face too a couple of times. I'm just, I'm just joking. All right, I'm just joking. All right, the next guy here. Now, you know, we kind of talked about this off the air, Tom, and I kind of see your point. Maybe there could be a better year out of him, but for fantasy, he's sucked the past three years. The guy on top is Odell Beckham Jr. This year, he could come back. There could this could be the year. I mean, three years in a row, Tommy was drafted in the first round by the mainstream. They said draft Odell first round. Last year, I said Landry would outperform him. I said this. I went viral with it. I put my reputation on the line, yeah. and people laughed at me. They said, "Hey, Joe, tie Joe up in a straight jacket. Send him over there. Punch <laughs> Joe. F you, Joe. Screw you, Joe. Shut down your channel, Joe." I, you know, I got ridiculed by saying Landry would outperform him. Now it seems like the norm that Odell kind of is a little overrated uh what do you think this year is there a step up does he finally come back to form to like four or five years ago four or five years ago i think he's going to come closer he listen he played he had his worst year of his career last year um besides in 2017 when he was injured but listen he's a, if he plays 16 games he's getting 13 1400 yards that's who he is um i i i do think that and now i think it's going to be i think he might have less catches uh, than usual, but bigger plays because kind of similar to what Stefanski did in Minnesota. He had Adam Thielen was the one guy on as the possession guy, right? Picture that as Jarvis Landry and then picture Odell like Diggs. Diggs had a better year when Thielen was there. Diggs had more catches last year, but less yards and I think less touchdowns, less performance. Yeah. I'm t like people don't understand. It's so important to have another good wide receiver on the other side of you and also even around you to spread the field because I think Odell will have bigger plays this year, perform bigger than last year. And I, I just think my problem with him is Baker Mayfield. I, I don't like the guy. I don't think he's a great quarterback. I think this is his year where he really has to prove it. Otherwise, listen, I've talked to some people. They signed Case Keenum for a lot of freaking money for a backup. Right. Fansky worked with, I don't know if I said this before, he worked with Keenum in Minnesota when Keenum was like 13 and three. He went here because Stefanski is going to go to him if Baker starts off shitty. He's going to go to him, obviously, if Baker gets hurt. Keenum is a system quarterback. He's been that since college. He did not succeed in Denver or um, what's it called? The system in Washington, because that's not his system. He fits this system. I think he'll better be better with a guy like Case Keenum. As of course, what scares me in Cleveland is the quarterback. Right. I think if you put a, a different quarterback here, you got Odell going for 1,400 yards. And you got Landry getting 1,200 yards and being that, that possession guy. So I think there's room for that. I'm just worried about the quarterback situation in Cleveland. Now, Baker hasn't spoken a lot this offseason, which is smart for him. I hate when guys, like I told you this before, whether it's your buddy Zach Moss, um, all these people that talk shit and they never, yeah. they never, they don't play. Like you haven't played the game yet. You don't deserve to talk or you better back it up. So I'm more concerned about the quarterback situation this year. If Baker goes into himself or they have a quarterback that can play really at a good level, I think Odell will get 13, 1400 yards because that's what he is. And I think Odell has something to prove this year. Um, and I really think he's going to get some big plays. It's just a matter of how many with what quarterback, if that quarterback can produce. Well, he's come out and said that he's going to have one of the biggest, best years of his life. He's ready to go. He's healthy. Um, you know, he had that surgery in the off season or whatever he did. When did he have that surgery? I don't know. A while ago, he's fine. I, I he's going to get the opportunity to get it. I told you, I'm worried about the quarterback situation here, just because I'm not sold on Baker yet. I need to see something. I've never been sold on him. I mean, people last year thought he was going to come out and be a stud. I was laughing. I you mean, know, I've seen this guy play live. I just 
nothing impresses me. He's a, he was a system quarterback. <laughs> Like but in college, and I don't, I don't know. Maybe Stefanski can get it out of him, and if he can, Odell's going to have a good year. I, I do think so. You know, the targets—that's another concern there now with Kareem Hunt. You know, potentially playing an entire season now. I'm looking for him to catch the ball quite a bit. I think he's going to be used a lot more in the passing game. You know, that's a concern. They got Hooper there, catch the ball as well. So I think they're going to spread the ball around, and Landry's there, and he's bottom line, he's got that rapport with Baker prior to Odell being there. So it's going to be interesting. I, I, I think this goes back down to volume again. And can Odell continue to stay healthy? He's had some weird injuries in the past. And, you know, if he stays healthy and gets the volume, yeah, man, I, top 10 for sure. But right now I'm just, I'm just, I don't trust the man. Three years of getting screwed by him. Not me personally, but people have, I, I have, I was the only guy that said stay away from this guy is overrated. We're gonna have to see, man. It's gonna be interesting. The offense, I'll be, I'll be keeping an eye on for sure. Well, what what was disappointing last year was his touchdown total. Yeah, uh, that that was really disappointing because he's a guy that always found the end zone. You know, usually a double digit end zone guy, uh, except when, when when he's played almost a full season. Four so, touchdowns, man. That's nothing. Yeah, that, that, that's well, that's what worried me. And listen, new coach again, third year in a row, new coach. I'm more more, more worried about the coaching and the quarterback than I am about these receivers. If that stuff works out, both of these receivers will be good. Um, uh, that's my opinion on it. I just don't know if he's going to have the right coaching. And to give you an idea how bad he is with touchdowns the past three years, he's had 13 touchdowns in three years. He had equal to that back in his 2015 year with the Giants. So four touchdowns last year, six in 2018, only three yeah. in 2017 because he only played four games. He was injured in 2017, but that doesn't matter. I look at, I look at the stats. I look at the fantasy production. I look at where he's being drafted and, He's done nothing. 13 touchdowns in three years. That's it, it, not good. So, yeah, he's got to get his touchdown count up significantly. Yeah, he does. So, so is, is there any wide receivers, early round guys that you'd avoid? Maybe like a Keenan Allen, anyone you, you don't uh, know? Amari well, Cooper? Not Cooper. I mean, well, there's a few that I'm okay on. Maybe. I don't know how high these two guys are going. One of them may be Keenan, but let's talk about Allen Robinson first. Okay. I'm not huge on Allen Robinson. He's only had two th uh, thousand yard seasons in his in his six years in the in the league. So I I don't I, I mean he's a guy who has never put two back back to back seasons good seasons in a row. So he's a guy just statistically looking. I just would pass on Allen Robinson. What about you? You know that's that's really really tough one because I think he's the main guy there. I don't think Miller or anybody else will come in there and steal the volume. Now Mitch Trubisky is now saying it's his team. Like, is Mitch going to step up and continue to feed Robinson? Because Robinson had a pretty good year last year. Is that going to carry over to this year? But yeah, I see the volatility with Allen Robinson. But maybe now he's finally gotten his groove. Last year he finished eighth in PPR. Last year. Uh, 16 games, 154 targets, 98 receptions, seven touchdowns, over 1,100 yards. So the 154 targets is kind of appealing to me. I kind of like the look of that. Third in targets amongst wide receivers. So that is something that's really drawing me to him. The other thing that's drawing me to him, again, is the fact that Mitch Trubisky, you know, says he's he's got to perform. Another guy like Baker Mayfield that has to step up. Am I investing in Ryan Robinson, second, third, maybe fourth round if he falls that late? No, I'm I'm drafting running backs where his ADP is. I'm going to stay away, but I definitely there's an appeal to him. There's a ceiling there. There's something attractive about okay. him for fantasy, but I, I I'm just not really drawn in by it this year. There's not much attractive about the Chicago Bears. <laughs> um, here's one thing I think you made a mistake. What Nick is this? Wins that job. Okay. I think you need to start looking at Nick Foles. Listen, they're not paying Nick Foles eighteen million dollars to sit on the bench and. You know, keep it warm uh, or whatever the number is that Nick Foles came in there because it's a safety net. Nick Foles is the guy there because he's got he knows the offense. I know, I know Trubisky does, but he he know he knows that's the same offense. Peterson pretty much runs in Philly similar. They both come from Andy Reid's coaching tree. So you're going to see something uh, like he's on the hot seat. Nagy, right? Right. He'd go on midseason if they're two and six. Right. So. When you're on the hot seat, you go after comfort and you go after winning. You're not trying to rebuild. I mean, they can't even rebuild. They don't even have a young quarterback. But I think they know what they got in Trubisky, and I think they know the best way for Trubisky to, to succeed is a change of scenery. So I think Trubisky becomes the backup. Foles comes in. So I think you need to look at it when Nick Foles comes in as the starter. Now, I don't think Nick Foles is a great starter, but he's not going to lose you many games. So I don't think 
you know, they're, they're going to be throwing the ball a shitload and not big plays, big passes. So Allen Robinson could be his go-to guy. I like Miller to take a step up. I like, I don't like Jimmy Graham. I like the rookie tight end over there. I like Montgomery oh. as I'm talking to like it for the beers, not like him in general. And, um, I just don't like this offense. I don't like that team, but I think they will be a, they have a tough, tough defense. They'll be keep them in the games and their goals to win 17, 14 football games, not their goal. But that's the, their only opportunity. To win like, you know, 14 to 10, 17 to 14, 20 to 17. They're not going to be going out there scoring 30 points a game. So you're not going to get a ton of touchdowns from this guy. And you I I, I like I said, I've never he, he's played 16 games last time in 2016 before last year. So can he put another good year together? Maybe I think his ceiling is about eleven hundred yards, a thousand yards. So I don't think he's you know, I don't think he's gonna take that step up and, and excel in this offense again. Yeah, just to wrap this up, I, I'm not I'm not touching Allen Robinson because again I'm drafting a running back at that ADP. But just to go back to the quarterback to wrap this up thing, I see. I mean, I agree with you. If I want to play it safe and smart and I want to win games, you go with Foles. But I just see Mitch Trubisky starting the season out, and if he if he's on a roll, if he's he's three and zero, he stays on. If, if uh, sorry, Trubisky, I, I see him starting. There. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's possible. Listen, that all that stuff's possible. Yeah, I mean, I mean the thing is, it's got to be in camp. If, if Foles completely blows him away in camp, then yeah, then Foles starts. But I think it'll be an even match. I think Mitch Trubisky knows he's got to play his heart out. I don't think there's going to be a big gap in training camp to say, okay, Foles is far superior. Let's start him. I think Mitch makes a case for it, gets the start, crumbles, and then Foles comes in. Maybe. I think that I don't know if the teammates respect Trubisky. I don't, I don't know how it is there. But uh, you want to go to Keenan Allen quick? Yeah, yeah, we'll do uh we'll do Keenan now. I think that's pretty much it for the early guys that you definitely want to be cautious of and be aware. Um and actually two more guys. I want to talk about Mari Cooper. I have him pulled up here and then Keenan Allen, then we'll wrap this up here. Uh, Amari Cooper, I'm concerned. He peaked at 119 targets last year, 79 receptions, eight touchdowns, and over 1,100 yards. I get it. But they now have CeeDee Lamb. Now they had Randall Cobb there last year, Tom. 83 targets, 55 receptions. Now we know CeeDee Lamb. Physically, is a better athlete, young, hungry, one of the top prospects coming in. Uh, but, you know, we don't expect a lot from rookie wide receivers, but he's there. I think he's going to be utilized. I think he's going to be used a lot. They've got Pollard maybe coming in, catching the ball a little bit. And they've, they've got Gallup, who could be technically a wide receiver one on his in his own rights. I think he's, you know, just right there. He's not ultra elite, but I think he's good. Uh, he, you know, he's got a nose for the end zone. He catches the ball. He runs hard after the after the catch. But you've got all this talent. I don't see Amari Cooper being a big volume guy and a guy that I can trust. What do you think of Amari? I think um, his he's 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 I think he's a really good wide receiver. I think he's he can be consistent. He suffered from drops early in his career. He wasn't well loved in Oakland. He was playing with a inferior quarterback in Carr. I think this year is the year of Dak Prescott. I think Dak has everything to prove to make his money. Um, so I think Cooper's going to get the ball a lot. I think he'll do what he did last year. Eight touchdowns, twelve hundred yards, almost give or take a hundred yards. I mean, I'm not looking at a monster year because they have other options. And McCartney is going to spread the ball around, uh, coach, on that offense. But listen, this year Dallas, that Dallas is a team. They went twelve and four and sixteen, and they went down. Then they went to the playoffs, then down. They're inconsistent. That's who they are. But they've been better with Cooper, and I think Cooper is the one option on this offense. And I think Cooper, you know, by default, is going to get you know eleven hundred yards this year. So I, I like Cooper as a player. I don't think I think he's a really good wide receiver in the NFL, but not a mega star, not a top five. So CD Lamb doesn't scare you to take some of that volume not this year. I like I said, he's a rookie. Like you said, he's a rookie. I don't know how good CD Lamb is either. A lot of these rookies just bomb. Like if you yeah. could go back and look at the first round five years ago, six years ago, five, four years ago, yeah, oh, this guy's good. Half these guys don't even end up being good. Kevin White never made it. I know. So like. I'm not going to put stock in a rookie, even though he was first round and I think he's good. I, I think he'll have to look at Marquise Brown last year. His best game of the season was week one. And I'm sure everybody was jumping the waiver wire for him. Or yeah. Adam. But he's a rookie. They hit the rookie wall like CD Lamb's good. But you think Prescott's going to trust CD Lamb on the big plays? He's going to go to him for some big plays probably. And he can end up being better than Cooper. But this year, Cooper, when he was a rookie, had a thousand yards. He had a good year. But I mean, that's a thousand yards, you know, with 63 yards a game, you know, and I, I think he'll still, he only had 119 touches last year targets and he put up 1200 yards. I think he had a good season and I can see that 
Jason Witten's gone. Not that he was super, super like um, productive last year, but I'm not too hot on their tight end game. I, I think CD Lamb is just another weapon on that offense, but Amari's still the one and still the man there. Yeah. We'll have good games. Another guy not on my radar. I just think CD Lamb will be a factor. Yeah. It's going to be an annoying situation. So, uh, last guy, Keenan Allen. I mean, who's throw, throwing the ball? Weren't these guys, weren't the Chargers looking at? Colin Kaepernick as well. Like a month ago, I heard some buzz saying he's a good fit for them. I mean, like, who do they trust? Do they trust uh, Herbert or whatever the hell his name is. They trust Tyrod Taylor. Like, I don't trust anybody. You know, Keenan Allen, I don't really trust as a receiver in general. Would you consider Keenan Allen at all? Uh, Keenan Allen, I mean, he, he's, you know, he's a productive wide receiver. He, he's he's a good player. Um, he's a guy most teams would, would love to have on their team a, a, as an option. Um, he, he's, you know, he's not so much a, um, I don't know. He didn't, his, he didn't have any, any really, uh, last year. I don't think he had much big play capability. Um, he's not a big, big play guy. He's a really good possession guy. He's a guy that can catch the ball. He's got good hands. He's a guy that you'd want on your team. He's not a big touchdown, big scoring guy, but these kind of guys usually aren't that good with Tyrod Taylor. So no. I, I think he this offense fits Justin Herbert better. I'm not sold on Justin Herbert yet, but I'm not I don't Tyrod Taylor bombed in Cleveland a couple years ago. Before that, he took the Bills to the playoffs, but they didn't like him enough. They you can only I think Tyrod Taylor may go with his team to a certain extent, then they'll put Herbert in at the towards the end of the season, middle of the season. But I I, I would stay away from him. I mean, he's a good player and he'll get the ball, but I just think it's going to be frustrating at times because Tyrod's not a good thrower. Right. He's not. Yeah, I'm I'm staying away. I've watched him. Like I keep going back to that example where, like, yeah. it's like you know, you're down by you know four points. You got Tyrod in the ball. You know, you got you got it at your own twenty. You know, two minutes left, and he'll go three and out. Like I don't trust this guy. He's anticlimactic. He's not a guy that'll win games. No, he's not. And Philip Rivers was there last year. Had you know probably one of the worst years of his career. Um, he had a really bad year. They don't have a great old line either. Uh, they don't have a running game. Um, no, I'm not sold on Eckler. Everyone's so high on Eckler. He had a good year last year, but that was Rivers dumping the ball off to him, getting a lot of receptions. He only had 132 attempts as a running back, so not sold on this. Falling game. Four, right, two years ago, this team just went downhill pretty quickly. Yeah, and I can see them being pretty bad next year. Um, I mean, listen, could they put some magic together? Be six and six. All of a sudden, listen, if you're six and six or through 12 games and you got four left. You know Tyrod's not going to take you in the playoffs, so then they'll no. look in to try to move the ball. It, they have a good defense, and that's what you have to watch. Watch out. They have a decent secondary. They got really good. Derwin James is good. Bowles is really, really good. A couple studs on that team. They have a good defense, so that could keep them in some games. And that's all they want Tyrod to do: keep them in the game. The same right. with Spears, Khalil Mack, and that defense keep us in the game. Just win it in the fourth quarter for us. So that's got to be their model. No coach is going into the season saying we lost. We're tanking for Trevor Lawrence this year. Last year it was tanking for Tua. They're going to go in and try to make the playoffs, right? And there's seven right. teams in the playoffs this year, so you might see people behaving a little different, uh, right. quarterbacks towards the end of the season. So you'll see Herbert if they're sucking, or even if like Tyrod's got them stalled at the halfway point or something where they need Herbert can come in and maybe win some games because you know that offense isn't going to win you many football games with Tyrod Taylor. Not at all. So that's it, guys. There, that, So we've covered a lot, man. I gave you a lot of receivers here to avoid, especially early round guys, so you don't have any potential pitfalls here. Now, mind you, the ceiling could be phenomenal with guys like Hopkins, guys like Odell this year, but you know, I went over the facts on why I'm avoiding them. And you should be going robust RB early. And I talk about that in the 16 round draft solution. Make sure you guys get it linked below or the fantasy and fantasy direct at the fantasy direct access. I'll text you guys everything you need this season from waiver wires to, to optimal players, DFS, even my picks against the spread. And Tom's going to help me with that too this year. So it's going to be exciting, Tom. I'm ready, man. What's What do you think? Season's happening or what? Yeah, it's happening as of now, 100%. They're trying to negotiate on the preseason if there's going to be two to four games, but it, there's nothing's been agreed to contrary to what's been reported. Fans um, in the stands or no? I say no. Um, I don't know. I think it depends on the states, to be honest. I don't know if the NFL is going to overrule that, but there's some states uh, that, that are going to come out and say we will have a certain amount of fans in the stand. There's some states that don't care about anything as much, you know, and then there's other states that won't allow it. So right now it's going to be a mix. But the NFL can always come in and say, 
we are not going to allow any fans in any stand anywhere. So I, I don't think they're allowing them in baseball. I don't think they're allowing them in basketball. They're definitely not. So in football, they're, that, that the, the, the good thing for them is that it's a ways away. And there's like I read an article today. I'm in down near here near Miami. They have their Miami's trying to fight to put some fans in the stands. No team, in my opinion, nobody will have 100% in the stands. No. So you're going to try to see some people looking for 25 to 50 percent more being more towards that 25. And I don't know if that would even be granted. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, yeah. I I just see it being, you know, minimal stands, maybe some masks on stuff like that. But it'll be interesting, man. Let's just get a season going. I need football in my life, Tom. I I can't deal it anymore. I need it. I'm not saying this is crazy. Watch watch Korean baseball. Uh, no, I'm, I'm more interested in the UFC right now. I'm watching some MMA gets me through it. That's about it, man. That's what's getting me through it is just UFC. That's all. That's all I got right now, man. Really? So, so yeah, man. Well, Tom, thanks for being here, guys. Check out the Tom Santanello podcast available on Apple. And is it on Spotify or just on Apple right now? Everywhere. A couple YouTube just went up too. Okay, guys, make sure to follow Tom Santanello. You know how to find them guys. Go to Apple and iTunes app and just search Tom Santanello podcast. Great real football inside information from him uh thanks tom for being on man great episode lots of insight for you guys to help you through your leagues get 16 rounds and we'll talk to you guys soon thank you